I was a young boy when this incident took place, somewhere around 1968 or 1969. My family and I were living in Ohio, in a little town called Ridgeville. We were in a rather undeveloped part of the town. Our home was surrounded by a lot of wilderness, and it became a buffer between our house and the town. I rode my bike to school, like all the kids, and I often took a shortcut while on my bike and rode through the woods. There was a main trail that opened close to my school. By taking this shortcut and not riding all the way around, I saved about 10 minutes on my trip each way. No one ever thought twice about it, since the trails were pretty well maintained. This one day, I hopped on my bike and left school, taking the shortcut through the woods. Normally there were four or five of us who rode home in that direction. But this day, I was all alone. I had made this trip a hundred times, and I didn't think anything about it. Halfway down the trail, I started to get the weirdest feeling. It just crept over me for no reason at all. I had this feeling that there was something deeper in the woods and hiding behind the trees. Whatever it was, I had a feeling that it was watching or following me as I rode my bike down this path. It was too creepy to describe, really, and it felt like I was in danger. I tried to look over my shoulder to see if there was someone there, but I could never see anything. I decided to get out of there as quickly as I could, and I raced out of the woods. There were other paths that had more people and bikes on them, and they weren't as fast as this path, but I thought it might be safer if I went over to that path and stayed away from this one since it was so isolated. I heard branches snapping in the trees, and I kicked it into high gear. I could hear the rustling of the leaves in the bushes, and I knew there was something not normal happening. It was like whatever was in there was watching me, and it was keeping pace with me on my bike. I started to ride as hard and as fast as I could. At one point, I turned back and looked over my shoulder. It was then that I caught sight of a huge creature covered in reddish-brown hair. It was standing upright on two feet, and it looked like it was over eight feet tall. It was covered in fur, except for patches of blackened skin on its face. It reminded me of an ape in a way, but it really wasn't built like an ape. It had long, shaggy hair that was very coarse and thick. Its shaggy hair gave it a wild appearance. It was standing next to a thick clump of trees, and I saw it holding a large broken branch in its hand. This branch was so large, it could have easily been used as a weapon. I saw it running through the trees, and as it ran, it was taking very huge steps, confirming that it was a very tall creature with a large stride. While I was riding, I noticed that there was no usual forest noises, like birds chirping or wild animals moving about, which just didn't seem normal to me. There was a total silence in the wood, like everything got scared and ran away. This only added to my panic and made me really want to leave the area as quickly as possible. For most of my youth, I hung out in the woods with my other friends. There were a few times when we'd catch rancid whiffs of a horrible smell, but we would laugh it off and just say that it was because there was animals that die in the woods and they were decaying. But after I had this experience of Bigfoot chasing me along the path, I have been able to put the pieces together. I feel confident in saying that those horrible smells were signs that a Bigfoot was near. After the incident on the trail, I chose to remain silent and never told anyone about my encounter. I was afraid that people would joke and tease me, making me the butt of all the jokes. And as a young kid, that's the last thing you want. It was probably 10 years before I said anything to my father. And much to my surprise, my dad didn't mock me like I thought he would. Instead, he began to yell at me for not sharing my experience with him sooner. I was really confused, and I asked him why it mattered to him. My dad sat there and grew very serious, a side of him I had never seen before. My dad began to tell me about his encounter when he was a kid. It was roughly in the same area of the woods, and he began to explain that there were stories about the swamp man, the wild man of the woods, and the swamp ape. In fact, these stories were so common that they became part of the local culture in Ridgeville. I never paid much attention to them until that afternoon when something was chasing me. After that event, it was months before I went down that trail and I never went alone again.